Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rebuild It. We are going to continue on with the Can-Am build this week. And the goal is to get this thing driving under its own power. That's what I want to do. I want to, by the end of this video, I want to be able to drive this thing across the pond. Well, across the dam. So let's see if we can do it. So let's talk clutches. Here is the one that you saw earlier that we that came on the, actually it wasn't even on the can am but it was down the floorboard and we got it. And after a lot of searching, we finally found a, another one that's a used one in really good shape, 850 bucks for that. And that was the best deal. So this is the correct clutch for a Turbo R, which is what we've got, okay? Now, when we, looked at also in the floorboard when we picked up the machine was the secondary clutch. I think I showed you that earlier. This is not the correct secondary clutch for that machine. This is for a non-turbo machine. So I have no idea how that got in the floorboard of that thing. This is a helix for that goes with this secondary clutch, but that doesn't go on that machine. This is the correct clutch for that machine for a turbo so it's made different it it instead of a helix being up against the shaft coming out of the motor this goes directly to that see how that's shaped so this was the only one i could find this was 400 and some odd dollars and you could tell it was in a on a full motor that, or a, a side by side that had water in the uh, clutch box so we've got to take this apart and clean all that and hopefully it's nice and smooth and it's not pitted. So that'll be the first thing we do. And there's the old spring. So all this stuff, these things right here need to be in the scrap bin. And I didn't know what spring was on this clutch. You could buy different springs. The springs determine different things based on the strength of the spring. And so I went ahead and ordered a OEM spring to make sure that that um, is what we've got in here. So and there's the belt, there's the different bolts. This is the a spreader tool that we we'll use once we get this installed. You hook this tool to it and it spreads this apart and so that you can put the belt on. Let's get these two ones that we don't want out of here and then we'll start trying to take apart this one and see if we can get it cleaned up. All right, so those did come out, so that's a relief. I was using my Torx bit and snapped the end of it off in there. Could not get it out. Finally, it turned upside down. I was tapping around on it and it fell out. So there's the tip of that Torx bit. So I ended up going and getting a new Torx bit, a lifetime warranty one. So hopefully it will not snap. And I went ahead and marked how everything lines up got a mark here and I've got a mark on the other side of this bottom pulley and a mark on this so they all go back in the same holes. Knock those screws out. And then this should come apart hopefully. I think I'm going to put uh, these in the uh, sandblasting cabinet. Lightly sandblast all this without high pressure and get all this rusty stuff off. It's not really, it's not rust, it's corrosion because this is aluminum and doesn't rust. And then uh, we'll see what we need to do on the inside to smooth all that back up.
right, so here's how we, what it ended up with. I didn't ended up putting it in the sandblasting cabinet, as you saw. Did a really good job on that side. And I think I just kind of wasted time using that, that wheel right there on the other side. The sandblasting cabinet gets it off. And then you can just sand it. I sanded it down to 600 grit. There's a little bit of pitting on there from that corrosion, but it's so smooth that I don't think it will cause any wear to the belt. I mean, it's just like, you can't hardly really feel it. I'm gonna do this other side and then it'll be time to put it back together. All right, so I've got this one all clean, super smooth. So I'll take my protective tape off of my shaft. I didn't want to get sandblast and sand on. And then we'll need to, this is the old spring. We take it out, put a new one in. And then I would say the hard part is going to be getting that thing compressed enough to where our screws can grab and we can get it pushed back together. So that's the next big hurdle. And now another Hillbilly solution at the Rebuild It Shop. How to put back together a secondary clutch on a Can-Am. Well, my vise was way too narrow to be able to get this closed. So I drilled a hole in a two by four so the shaft can go through. And I've got two pipe clamps on here. I've got my two, a bolt here and a bolt on the other side just dropped in the hole. And hopefully, cause you can't see this, through the top, I hope my bolt is lined up with the hole in this that I have to compress it down to. I do have my line lined up with the lines I made on the clutch so they're in the correct spots. So the trick is to just keep on tightening these about close to the same time until we get it compressed and hopefully I can get those uh, screws dropped in the hole, see if it works. That did work. So the clutches are, as far as I know, ready to be reinstalled. So I'm gonna look up the torque settings. And we'll put this primary on first. Go to this bolt right here and this washer. So we'll get that done. And it'll be really nice to see if this thing actually moves today. Clutches are installed and torqued now to spec. There's a little tool that goes on here and we tighten it up and it spreads these two discs apart. That allows us to get our belt on there. And um, then we take it off and that closes back up and we rotate it. And the belt should ride back up here to the, the top and go all the way back down on this. This is a bearing in here that spins. Should be down on that. So hopefully that works. All right, so here's this little tool. Sure we don't cross there or anything. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten this up. It should spread these two discs apart. Okay, so I don't have the belt put on there yet obviously but I started it up to see if the clutch is going to work. You can see how it's spinning and then watch if I give it gas. If I can reach it. So you see what it does when that belt's on there, it tightens that 
belt. Squeeze together, tighten that belt, make the guys up to the top of that thing, and bad to go to fire and get. All right, so the belt is on. That was actually pretty easy. So now <laughs> the scary part is seeing if this thing moves. So I just checked the brakes and it does have brakes. Rolled it around a little bit in neutral and it stopped it. So I'm gonna put this on a tripod and start it up and just kind of put it in reverse and see if it wants to move and then forward and see if it wants to move. Hopefully I don't smash through a wall or a car. So the next step is to get the cover put on that so we can go take it for a test drive. Here's the cover. So it's got a gasket that goes on there, which is right here. Bought a new gasket. And all of these bolts, this little bag of bolts right here was $60. And I'm going to put um, anti-seize stuff on here because those things are famous for seizing up in there and then when you take them off, it breaks the little, it's like a nut that's put in the plastic and they twist into that plastic. So I'm gonna do that before I put them in. And there's a certain uh, order that you have to tighten them in when you torque them. So we'll get all that done and then we'll see what pipes run. There's different pipes that go from the uh, cover over to different air, like so that this thing can breathe. I think there's two different pipes that go into it. So I've got all the bolts started all the way around and those bottom ones are not easy to get to. So now I'm gonna go through and torque them in this sequence. Then we will look for the tubes that go out of there and where they're all routed because all that stuff was off when we got it. So I have no idea where all that goes, but we'll find out. Alright, so all those are torqued to spec. Now for the tubes. So here's the tubes I've got. Looks like I'm missing one hose clamp. Pretty sure this one, since it's short, goes from here to here. So we'll do that, get that one put on. And then we'll figure out how these other ones are wrapped around here. Alright, so that one right there fit on just right. I think this long one here goes from this hole right here and down through that bottom and then we'll see how it, I'm sure that connects to the uh, first hole there on the, the hole on the right on the secondary clutch I think. All right so I've got that one on the back there and there's where it comes out in the cab and I'm sure this little uh, elbow here is where that goes probably. Now, the only other pipe we've got is right here. And the only place I see that's got a thin slot is right there. So that thing probably goes like that. And that up there and into that. But for now, that will let us uh, put our base on there and our seat and take this thing for a little test drive. Okay, so there's how that base sits in there. And that's good enough to put our seat in there and let us take it for a ride. This should be fun.
All right. So now here we go. Remember, I've never driven all these things before, so this should be interesting. <laughs> So we made it back to the shop, I'm dripping a little bit, <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. And I didn't drive it super fast because I'm not used to one of these things yet. But um, So now I know that it'll run and drive and everything. So I say it's time to start ordering all the stuff to make it look good. The big thing on this one is that it is a carbon fiber model. It feels like it really is carbon fiber on the top. It's like a layer, like you can see where all this clear coat is peeling. You can feel like the weave there. So it feels like it is like a small layer of carbon fiber on top of plastic. But when you get on um, Can-Am's website to order all these panels, it's about close to four times the price for the carbon fiber version versus the regular just black plastic version. So I think I'm going to swap this thing over to a, uh, they had another color scheme that was white, black, and green, just because it's so ridiculously expensive for the carbon fiber, fiber version. So I'll start uh, getting all that stuff ordered. We still have to bend this back out, get it straight and uh, just find all the stuff that's broken on this thing, this cosmetic, and get it put together. Thanks guys for watching this episode of Rebuild It. The goal was accomplished. We got the thing actually driving under its own power, so that's awesome. So now that we know that it actually works, we can go full on on trying to make it look good. So we'll start in on that on the next episode, I hope. And if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up below. And make sure you share a comment with us. We'd like to read what you guys have to say about this project. So we'll see you next week. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.